Welcome to the Scalable Climate Solutions Challenge. My name is Aad Mulder. I work for development bank FMO as fund manager for the Dutch Fund for Climate and Development. Thank you for joining us today. We will provide you an overview of the opportunities and conditions that apply to this fantastic challenge. The government of the Netherlands raised the Dutch Fund for Climate and Development, also called DFCD, in 2019. The Dutch Fund for Climate and Development has 160 million euros available to strengthen adaptation and resilience in developing countries. The aim of the fund is to strengthen the quality of water, the health ecosystems and also strengthen the agricultural sector against the effects of climate change. The fund is managed by a pioneering consortium of FMO, Climate Fund Managers, SNV and WWF. The fund works together with the private sector to catalyze 500 million of additional funding. This year, DFCD wants to increase its activities in Bangladesh, Kenya and Uganda. That's why today we are launching an initiative, the DFCD Scalable Climate Solutions Challenge. The goal is to partner with your organization to increase the resilience of agriculture, water and ecological systems against the effects of climate change. We will now go into more detail on the specifics of this challenge. Together, the DFCD and the Global Commission on Adaptation are looking for partners who are working on solutions to create a more resilient future. So we are looking for solutions that help improve the resilience of vulnerable groups and landscapes in Uganda, Kenya and Bangladesh. And that help improve the health of freshwater, forest, agricultural and ocean ecosystems with an established business model that is already viable and scalable. From all the applications, we will select three finalists, one for each country. The finalists will win up to 350,000 euros of development budget each and the chance to present their project at the COP26 in Glasgow. So let's have a closer look at the three landscapes and the context of this challenge. The landscape in Bangladesh is a riverine floodplain of three major rivers, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra and the Meghna. The coastal zone of Bangladesh is home to significant aquatic as well as terrestrial ecosystems which the population has found ways of living and using in harmony with nature rather than destroying it. During the monsoon period, these rivers flood and cover the floodplains with water. That is when fishing is the main activity. In the dry season, the land can be used for agriculture, mainly rice production. However, this traditional pattern has been disrupted by climate change and infrastructure developments, which impedes the natural flow of water and causes flooding after heavy rainfall, followed by drought. A nature-based approach is needed to improve food security, fresh water and sanitation. The DFCD and the Global Center on Adaptation will welcome any scalable climate solution that contributes to a solution. The south of Kenya, north of Tanzania, also known as the Soknot landscape, is home to three major ecosystems, the Mao Mara Serengeti, Amboseli West Kilimanjaro, and Savo Mkomazi. All are connected by important wildlife migratory corridors. The landscape contributes 2.6 billion euro annually to the economies of Kenya and Tanzania through wildlife tourism while providing an estimated 3 million jobs and more than 8 million euro in revenues. It also contains the main watershed and source of water for the population of Western Kenya. However, the landscape is vulnerable due to human encroachment and deforestation 
Increasing pressure from a fast-growing population, expansion of agriculture and the effects of climate change on natural resources threaten the landscape's ecosystem function and future sustainability. It also increases the vulnerability of both the wildlife and human populations, hence urgent action is required to preserve it. By targeting this specific landscape, we seek to collectively contribute to the development of a diversified economy by having a coordinated approach to agriculture, agroforestry, water management and sustainable energy investments. A scalable climate solution could enhance the ecological value and individual activities within a landscape and improve the resilience, economic prospects and livelihoods of the population. The Greater Virunga landscape is situated in the southwest of Uganda, bordering on the Democratic Republic of Congo and Rwanda. The landscape has the highest biodiversity of Uganda and comprises ancient tropical forests, ice-capped mountains, active volcanoes, savanna, swamps, and wetlands. These ecosystems provide habitats for many world-renowned species, including the entire population of remaining mountain gorillas and more threatened vertebrate species than in any other site in Africa. The Greater Virunga forested and mountainous landscape makes it a transboundary watershed for the entire region, providing millions of people with fresh water for drinking and farming as well as being the highest and most permanent source of the River Nile. The lakes within the landscape are important ecosystems and essential for commercial fisheries. However, the Greater Virunga landscape is a densely populated rural area with high rates of human population growth. The landscape's rich natural capital is crucial for the growing communities and contributes significantly to a sustainable national and regional economy. Forest products and other ecosystem services are a key source of income supplemented by small agriculture, fisheries and tourism. The Greater Virunga landscape has huge environmental, economic and social value that is impacted by climate change. A good scalable climate solution proposal would enable holistic bottom-up and people-centered approaches. It will build on the breadth of existing work and enhance the well-being of households while increasing the regeneration of degraded lands. So now that we know more about these landscapes, let's zoom in on the conditions that apply to this challenge. In the Deep City Climate Solutions Challenge, we are truly looking for projects that can scale climate impacts. These projects we hope to further support after the challenge with equity or debt financing from FMO or climate fund managers. Any type of organization can apply. However, organizations should have a balance sheet of at least 10 million US dollars or an annual turnover of at least 15 million US dollars. An ideal project that participates in the challenge has the four following characteristics. First of all, it has substantial climate impacts and benefits local communities, vulnerable groups or women in particular. A project needs to be able to scale quickly. Ideally, it already has a proven track record so that financing or investments can quickly follow. Next, a project needs to fit with the needs of local communities and ecosystems in the landscapes in Kenya, Uganda or Bangladesh. Finally, a project needs to be economically viable and needs to demonstrate how it has potential to generate positive return on investment. As investments that improve climate adaptation are highly context specific, they need to fit in with the local situation. This means that projects should ideally create synergies with other projects and industries and align with local or national development plans. We look forward to working together with you and your team to find scalable climate solutions for a more climate resilient world. Is your organization interested to join us in this challenge? Please go to thedfcd.com and find out more.